How's it going, people? This is Sable Final Four. Game one with the newly updated Metal Magnezone deck. We'll find out if it can be at least decent in standard right now. Give us a little bit of uh, entertainment at the very least. Tier three deck uh, for sure. I don't think I would even put it tier two, but maybe you never know. Uh, it could pass as a tier two deck. Uh, it's good as long as you don't play Tag Team GXs, uh, which are pretty much the meta right now. But like I've said, we designed it with Dialga GX to have a shot. Uh, if you get that guy to work, you can get at least one knockout, one big knockout on those Tag Team GXs easily. Alright, so I get to play first, and we're going to instantly get this uh, Dead NA GX since I don't have a supporter. Uh, we've opened up with a Mew. I guess it'll do. Uh, there's not, this deck really doesn't have many great uh, openers. I guess Diaga would be one, but you don't want to put him in harm's way. You really want to use this guy's GX attack because it's your only way to really put pressure against tag team GX Pokemon and give yourself an advantage. So Acrobike, a really bad uh, option here. I can either discard the Magnemite or the Magnezone. Of course I'm going to get the Magnemite, and this sucks. You don't want to do this, but discard the Magnezone is what I mean to say. But I guess I'm feeling okay because I know I have the uh, lure ball too, so we can try and get that guy back. But getting the basic down is important, so it's good that Acrobike enabled me to do that. So there's another Magnemite, and the last Cherish Ball. Get the Dusk Minute Cross my GX in hand too. Why not? And my opponent opened up with this uh, Poi Pull. I still he didn't even play a supporter. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the Dende GX is really great, man. It's, it's the heart and soul of consistency decks right now, especially GX decks where they run GXs anyway. Letting you get that draw six, uh, like a Juniper in the form of an ability, it's awesome. Like, I didn't even use a supporter. I decided to just save the Erika for next turn. And my opponent, all he did was play down this uh, Greninja Zorok GX. And like I've said, he has that Poi Pole. And when you just see that on its own, you don't know what deck it could be. It could be Blazeful on, it could be Dark Box, it can even be Quagsire or some other thing. But now that I see that Dark Pokemon, I know that it's probably some sort of a Weavile Dark Box deck. Uh, try and get those energies, move them around, use different attackers. So, we're still in the process of setting up ourselves, didn't do much. I don't like having Dialga in harm's way there, but... I guess this is the opportunity to draw cards, and hopefully we see the Magnezone soon. You need the Magnezone uh, for this deck to work, otherwise you can't do much. And since he's not doing a lot, I think Dialga should be safe for a little bit more. And uh, look at this Tyranidar Sable IGX, man. I mean, this art on this one looks really awesome. Uh, the artwork on cards these days are pretty hit or miss. They could even they could look like super awesome, or just average, you know, maybe mediocre. I don't know, or maybe I'm just too used to them that it don't look they don't look impressive anymore. Most of them. So we're gonna go with the other switch here, which is actually gonna bite me in the ass because I use my switches pretty easily here. I use one in the beginning to move the Dialga. Uh, in the active position, and now I use the second one to move Mew there, uh, so we can make a play. And that's not good because I you, the switches you want them for specific situations, and I kind of just use them pretty quickly here. It's gonna bite me in the ass later on. Uh, I know, but the reason why I did this is because this this Zorok GX Zorok Greninja has 250 HP. Now this isn't quite a knockout for the Necrozma GX, but if we put three damage corners on it with Mew, it gets set up pretty well, and I can just do exactly 220 and finish it off. And this is very important because it gives me the opportunity to get a, a knockout on this big Pokemon without using the GX attack of Dialga. And that's going to be my key to victory. So. I was feeling pretty good when I made that play. I'm thinking to myself, okay, I think I have some pretty good control over the game here. Uh, we're looking okay. I don't have Magnezone out yet, but I'm getting my setup going. I put those damage counters, setting it up to be KO'd. It already has two Darkness Energy on. I guess it could move them at any time. 
but I was feeling pretty good for myself. But my opponent is getting his act together now. A lot of darkness energies into play. Weavile is into play. Got the kill with Mew. That's not too bad. But what we really want to do is get the KO here. Now, I don't know. I promoted the Magnemite just sort of uh, because there's no guarantee we're going to get the uh, Duskman, the Magnezone out this turn. So I have to promote another sacrifice and just risk it. Uh, but there's no switch, so that's the thing. Can't get him out of the way. So let's see. Just lure ball and rare candy. Right. So I can get the Magnus on out if we use the lure ball and don't get super unlucky with three tails. I can get the Magnus on and start having that Magnet Circuit ability around. But we don't have energies. So that's the thing. I'm going to have to be more patient. And I probably shouldn't have used it to show my opponent that I have it, but I guess we're not going to play the Rare Candy anyway. I'm not going to play it yet, just in case my opponent uses Custom Catcher, and then they kill it, move the Darkness Energy on one guy, and then kill it. Instead, I'm just going to be patient. I have enough Magnemites in play. And just see what happens next turn, because I need, like... Duskman and Crossman to go active, and I need a few more energies. I hope he keeps the Greninja active, because that way we can get the one-hit knockout on it, pretty much. So he's going to grab the Darkrai Prism there with communication, a good Pokemon in this deck. You play it down, you can instantly put two Darkness energies on your field. I use this card many times in Expanded and Standard. Uh, it's just when it comes to these Darkness decks that want to gather energy for various reasons, it helps them out. It can be a bad opener and it can do a lot of bad things, but it's a very good Pokemon too. And Dark Pulse, okay. Everything is going according to plan. My opponent didn't pick pick on anything. I would really hate for him to pick on Dialga or even Duskman across my So now it's payback time. Rare Candy, gonna bring out my Magnuson out. And my opponent's stadium is actually gonna help us out at this Viridian Forest. I can't tell you how many times this Viridian Forest, you know, saved my ass. This is why I don't even run it in decks for the most part, because I know that many different decks run it, and I can just use my opponent's one. And this is metagame in 101, in a way. Uh, we're going to use this right now, make use of it, our opponent's stadium. So I have enough energies, and we're going to set up for next turn, too, with this Cynthia. Give me some more, so I can start building up the other guys. Uh, get rid of it now that we used it. That's how you do it. Use it and get rid of it. And Acrobike, draw one more card. Let's get the energy. I mean, I guess I could get the Fan Club since we can just use my Coronet, but it doesn't matter. I'm not going to use Fan Club at this point. So let's play down the Solgaleo. That could be handy later on. And let's attach... I think one more. I'm not going to do both. One on Dialga. Uh, I'm always worried about putting, attaching all of them sometimes because they could just pull you, pull up the Pokemon and then you lose it and all the energy is on. So spreading them around, sometimes being conservative, is good. So there's the 220. I get my KO on this Tag Team GX Pokemon. And before you know it, our opponent had a nice lead. And now I'm in the lead. We're also in complete control. We have our energy acceleration Pokemon out. I've got my attackers. I've got energies. I've got my Cornet. So I'm looking really, really nice. I can't complain. So now my opponent is taking his time. I guess he didn't see this coming. Uh, not sure what to promote. But in the end, he did promote this Darkrai Prism. And it's going to go with the B-String. Wow, this deck runs that card too? Damn. I guess they would if they're running like a natal. Cherish Ball doesn't have anything to search. And he's actually going to make use of this Dark Cry Prism and get me stuck. And this is going to be very, very significant because Dark Cry Prism, even though it's risky, odds are in your favor uh, that the defending Pokemon is going to stay asleep if your opponent has to flip two coins to wake up. So more than likely, he's going to get the plus he's looking for here. 
1 for 20, setting me up for a 2-hit KO. And I just stay asleep. Now, this is really bad because right now would be the time where I just use the Volkner or grab the switch. But I hastily used both of them in the beginning, not very mindful. And this is what I meant when I said it's going to bite me in the ass. Because now we're using the Volkner. And there's no switch, no switch in the deck. I'm just going to get the rare candy. Bring out the other Magnezone, I suppose. Not much we can do. And I just got to wait for my opponent to knock my dude out. And then I promote Dialga GX for the GX attack. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm in a decent position here still. Uh, he's in control. But uh, I've got, still got Dialga GX. He still needs to get a few prizes. But unfortunately, <laughs> uh, the problem is his field. If you guys are paying attention, he has eight darkness energies in play. That is a lot. Uh, I, I don't know how he managed to do it, but this deck, if it really tries, it can get that many energies out. And even that crazy GX attack of uh, Tyranidar becomes possible. If you have 10 darkness energies on, you're going to do high damage and mill 15 energies of your opponent. So, at this point, I realize that, oh shit, my deck is pretty thinned out. I don't think I have enough cards left. So if he goes with that, he probably has enough energies in play to do it next turn. He's going to deck me out. And it's going to be for an awesome finish. Just not for me. And he goes with the switch. Promotes Tyranidar. And as soon as I see it, I know, oh shit, this isn't good. I'm probably going to lose. Uh, I check my deck. There's less than 15 cards there. And it's pretty much going to be a GG. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit sad because I think we had this game. But, uh, you know, we did pretty good. Dark Box is probably not one of your worst matchups because this deck is kind of slow. Gives you a little bit of time. Diaga GX is sort of more safe against this deck. But yeah, there goes the GX attack, 10 energies on, 15 deck discards, and I pretty much lose. So I thought it was pretty awesome uh, seeing that GX attack work for once, milling my opponents, m milling my deck pretty much. So I, I thought I'd show you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this match. Hope you guys subscribe, leave a like, and share this video with your friends. This was GG, very good GG. Say Rovine 4, and we'll see.